Um, it does have a web version, and um, so there's the web version. You can try it on Stellarium.org. And uh, uh, I'm not going to be using that right now, uh, mainly because I think it has uh, some limitations. And because this is not the main thing I've been using, it, um, I don't know, frankly, what the limitations are. Um, so uh, so I, I just want to point out that it's there. You should try it out. But um, I will, in the remaining 10, 8 minutes, I'll use the version that's installed on my computer. So what Stellarium is useful for is, uh, uh, it, it's a planetarium simulator and it's a virtual planetarium. And what planetarium is useful for, uh, if you visited any of the planetariums either in San Francisco, uh, some community colleges are lucky enough to have one. We don't have one, <laughs> but um, what planetariums are useful for is, uh, they're useful for showing the stars as they would appear at particular time without you know, having to wait until then or without having to go back in time. So Stellarium by default will show you uh, what your sky should look like right now. Um, so I took time to enter my position. That's why it's Earth, Alameda. Uh, you might have to actually, uh, where is it, location window. You might have to put in your location. I, I don't actually live in Alameda. I live in Berkeley. I could have put in Berkeley. Um, <laughs> but Alameda is my default location, so I'll pretend that I'm in Alameda. So in Alameda, this is kind of what the sky would look like right now. So this is, I'm looking at southern uh, part of the sky. I guess technically, if I'm really in Alameda, depending on where I am, I could be looking westward and see the uh, uh, ocean, but <laughs> software is not good enough for that. This is just a, uh, this is a image of the ground. Is, it's just an image. It's not an actual uh, example of ground. Uh, where is it? Yeah, ground. I can get rid of the ground so you can look below you and see. Oh, that's so disorienting. So let me put the ground back in. Um, so, so, so this can, by default, it shows you the current time. And especially during the daytime, then it doesn't show you much. Oh, uh, it does show you the moon. So here's the sun, uh, which you shouldn't directly look at if it's a real sun. Um, with the moon, it will also show you the phases of the moon. It uh, because we just had a solar eclipse on Saturday. Wait, was it Saturday for? It was well. It was for a Saturday, so which means we are two days out from a new moon. So the phase of the moon should be crescent moon, and if you zoom in far enough, it'll actually show you the phase of the moon as it should appear if you look at the sky right now and if it's not cloudy. So that's the phase of the moon. That's uh, what you would see. Uh, I think at some level of zoom, this is kind of, you need a binocular to see moon as large as that. Um, so that's one thing that um, the, uh, planetarium is good for. It, uh, and you know, whatever planetarium is good for, same thing planetarium simulators are good for. Uh, but what this is more useful as is uh, it's kind of a, like an interactive database. Um, it can, um, so you know, there's a date and time window. I don't have to look at what the sky is like right now. I can kind of advance the time to a night time so that I can actually look at the stars, uh, not a daytime. And this is kind of what the night sky would look like. And, uh, oh, we are not in winter. Um, if we, we were in winter, I could have shown you the, shown you the winter triangle. But um, right now, we won't see winter triangle. So at nighttime right now, oops, wrong. Uh, nighttime right now, uh, huh, that's the Big Dipper. Wait, wait. Oh, um, so with the Big Dipper, by the way, this is how you locate the North Star. You do it by first locating the Big Dipper, and then using these two stars at the end of the Dipper, you kind of extend it out, go about seven times that distance, and where you are at is the should be the North Star or Polaris. Now, uh, 
this, uh, so if you are in a planetarium, this is what you could see. It's beautiful, it's nice. Here's something nice about virtual planetarium software that's even better than a planetarium. It's an interactive database. So once I have located the uh, Polaris, I can actually select it. I can left click on it to reveal all the information about Polaris. I can see its magnitude. It's uh, about 1.86 or you know, close to two, which means oh, wait, wait, a range of 1.95, uh, which means it's a um, uh, magnitude of two. It's uh, bright enough that it's not a star you would struggle to find in the night sky, even in the city, but it's also not that bright. It's not the brightest star out there. The brightest star, especially in summer, you will see um, Sirius in the uh, uh, Canis Major uh, constellation. And I frankly don't remember <laughs> well enough. I know my constellations well enough that on the other side of the Big Dipper is Cassiopeia, but um, I don't know how to find the Sirius other than to kind of look I don't think that is, yeah, that looks like that's part of the, uh, one of the constellations that's after a bird. Uh, where is, I can't tell. So here's the one thing that's nice about uh, having a virtual planetarium, which is that you can turn on a bunch of hints. One of the things I can uh, turn on are the constellation labels and constellation lines. So you can see that the Big Dipper is in the constellation of Ursa Major. And where is the Sirius? I thought that was one of the summer constellations. So I should be able to, uh, or the, the Canis Major is one of the summer constellations. So I should be able to see. I may need to advance the time a little bit. Uh, maybe it hasn't risen yet. So. Let me just zoom out so that I can see the whole sky in you know, a fisheye lens view and kind of advance the time a little bit here. Um, let's see. I'm gonna turn off the planet labels because they are kind of getting in the way. Um, hmm. Oh, wait, wait, I, oh, you know what? I think Canis Major is, it's a winter constellation. I remember in, uh, it's right next to Orion. Because uh, I think the mythology is, is the, 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 the big dog is a hunting dog. So, which means it's uh, something that you wouldn't, uh, yeah. So Orion is, uh, uh, it's a part of uh, 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 what should, what's called winter triangle that you can see in winter. And here's something wonderful you can do with a virtual planetarium software that, wait, I think you can do it also with a regular planetarium. This is something that you can do with a planetarium that you can't do with a real world observation, which is that you can change the parameters of the, of the simulation. Now, I could do different days. That's, <laughs> that, that's one way to do it. But if I want to save myself a little bit of work, What's easier is I can turn off the atmosphere. So the reason the sky looks bright during day is because of the atmosphere. All this blue light is the light scattering off of our atmosphere. So if I just turn off the atmosphere, pretend the earth doesn't have an atmosphere, then even with the sun out, the, the sky is dark enough to see the stars in the sky. So there's uh, Orion there, Orion the hunter, then uh, there's the Canis Major, big dog. Um, so it's serious, that's the brightest the star in our sky and it has magnitude of minus 1.45. So, so that's a kind of one thing nice about uh, the planetarium software. You can use that to uh, look up information. You can use that to simulate what the night sky would look like. And what I'm calling, um, or, or not I, what people call winter triangle, it's something that you will really notice in the winter night sky is a triangle formed by Betelgeuse, Betelgeuse, 
don't know the pronunciation, this star, <laughs> Sirius, and Proxium. These are three pretty bright stars. So in a winter sky, these, are star, these stars are fairly noticeable. And because they approximately form an equilateral triangle, uh, it's kind of easy to notice. And it orients you once you see it, well, or once you see Orion's belt, you know Orion's there, you know Canis Major is here. So, um, so yeah. And I guess I'm kind of out of those 10 minutes I had. Um, let me just uh, demonstrate one other thing um, so that um, you can kind of see how I was using this software to, um, so one main thing I used this for was I used this to demonstrate um, a retrograde motion in the, or the planetary motion in the lecture slides. So let me kind of orient myself here. This is west. So east is on that side over there. So, okay, I'm looking at Mars here. Um, so this is, with this software, this is how you can um, see what the motion of a planet looks like. It's not a motion over a day. And because if you will see it, when I advance it by about an hour, I mean, planet doesn't move. Okay, it moved over here. It's about to set, but in the way the planet moves over a matter of hours, it's kind of the same way the stars move. When we talk about planetary motion, that isn't exactly what we are referring to. What we are referring to is the motion of the planet relative to the stars. So for that, you have to actually have to change the days. So let me change the day here. So when I change the day from today, where is that today? No, let me uh, go back to, uh, tomorrow, from tomorrow to the day after, then you will see that two things move. One, the stars actually move a little bit. I think each day it advances by, is it four minutes? Something like that. So stars themselves will actually move a little bit, but so I can actually do this. So uh, this is where that star is at, or do I need, a, okay, let me look at that reference. So I'm going to advance it by one day. Let me just turn back the time a little bit to bring that back, start back, about four minutes. So, so, um, so you have to kind of think of this adjustment, but what you will have seen even before I did this adjustment is that Mars moved relative to this star here. Um, so tomorrow, <laughs> during the daytime, Mars will be a little bit apart from the star. But the day after that, Mars is right over the star. And in trying to look, okay, is Mars moving eastward or westward? You have to imagine that the background of the stars are fixed. And when you look at it that way, then Mars is moving eastward. It's moving kind of in that direction. And that is away from west. And if you're picking just a random time in the year, uh, most of the time Mars will be, planets will be moving eastward. That's what we call direct motion. But during a special times of the year, they'll be moving westward. That's what we call retrograde motion. And um, to uh, get the slides that you see in the lecture slides, I kind of just scroll through these to <laughs> find, okay, when is a Martin retrograde motion and find that. And I think I got that uh, like, a, uh, uh, September, October, December, um, those who, uh, in the upcoming year. Um, so that's the dates I used for the slide. So I just want you to have this time to point this out so that um, for people who are just uh, interested in astronomy and want to explore on your own, you know that this is a free software. You can download it, install it and run it. And if you are using something that's a, uh, not a computer where you cannot install softwares, there is a web version that I'm told is fairly capable. There are some things that don't work, but you know, it's still fairly capable. Um, and uh, I just want you to make sure that people knew that these resources out here. And for some of the assignments you will see throughout the semester, especially as we get to talking a little bit more about the planet um, in, I think, module three in the, about the solar system. Uh, this is, a, once again, it's an interactive database. It can be a way you can look up um, 
you, you can look up information in a kind of graphical way. It's not just looking things up on the uh, Google search or Wikipedia. 